This video guide is going to show you how you can assess the internal reliability of scales using Cronbax Alpha. I'm going to show you how to do it for a scale overall as well as how to do it for subscales. It's worth noting that internal reliability is actually a very important thing in psychology. Below this you'll see there's a link to a blog by Sam Parsons who actually looks at why it's so important, why internal reliability is critical when we do psychological research. It's a bit beyond the scope of this video to go into that detail, but I'll put it in below and you can read that if you are interested. It really, really is a very, very good blog. Uh, it's also worth bearing in mind that internal reliability is not just for questionnaires. You can do it for different cognitive tests. Um, I've done a few papers myself that's looked at this internal reliability with regard to cognitive tasks such as the visual probe task or the street task. So this is um, an important concept. And generally speaking, if you do report a scale, I'd always give the internal reliability of that scale when I'm reporting it. I think it's really valuable. The data we're gonna be looking at today is relatively straightforward. The first thing is we've got 10 columns here, labeled as audit one to audit 10. And this is the alcohol use disorders identification task. And basically it's 10 items that look at different things around alcohol consumption. It's a single dimension scale, so basically you get your total scores on the audit. Responses an individual makes on these items should be relatively consistent. In order to produce a Cronbach Alpha in SPSS, we need to go to Analyze, Scale, and then Reliability Analysis. The default analysis that it's going to do is going to produce you a Cronbach's alpha. So if we've got a single unidimensional scale like the audit, all we need to do is click across the 10 audit items. And we can click OK and that would produce us a Cronbach's alpha. But we could also ask for some other little bits to get descriptors for the item and the scale and scale if item deleted and this is actually a really useful measure because it can show you what variables are problematic if you find your reliability is not great then you can look at this and it'll tell you which item is causing the problem with your scale because it says this so scale if item deleted what this refers to is it'll give you a Cronbach's alpha if the item in question was not part of the analysis so it's a really good diagnostic tool you can click continue let me click OK so this is the case processing summary so in this data set here we've got 94 valid cases and we've got two excluded these are ones with missing data so not all data is perfect sometimes you get missing data so the total amount of cases is 96 94 full ones two with missing data this is your critical statistic here so this is your Cronbach alpha of 0.839 and this is the number of items, and we know it's 10 items, audit once, audit 10. And this is actually the thing that you write up. You can do this as part of the results section, though often you'll see it, and when I do it, I'll tend to report it in the method section. So when I would describe the audit in my materials, and I'd say the current sample Cronbach alpha was 0.84. Generally speaking, the cutoff believed to be representative of decent internal reliability, good internal reliability, is a Cronbach alpha of 0.7. There is arguments why it should be higher than this and so on, but generally speaking, that tends to be what's accepted. And as you can see here, we've got Cronbach alpha of 0.84. So we could make the conclusion that we do have an internally reliable scale. Now, if we look at the next Thing is just item statistics. These are the mean and the standard deviation for each item. So the mean response for audit one is 2.90, standard deviation for that is 0.868, and we've got 94 full cases. Now, these are the ones I talked about, so useful diagnostic tools, and in particular, this Cronbach's alpha if item deleted. So, for example, here, if audit one was deleted and we just looked at audit two to audit ten, so we just looked at all of those items excluding this, we'd have a Cronbach alpha 0.84. Marginally better, but really irrelevant to us. It's not making any major differences whatsoever in the reliability. You'll see some as well cause bigger drops. So if we get rid of order eight, we've got a noticeable drop there. It's now 0.804. 
opposed to 0.839 in our full sample. So again, we can see some items are slightly better than other ones. If we had a poor Cronbach's alpha, and I'll show you an example of this later on, if we had a really poor Cronbach's alpha, then we could identify well, is one item just dragging everything down, is one item with people responding very differently to that item, therefore we can remove that item maybe if it's particularly problematic and is completely ruining the reliability of your scale. The other variables in this are just relatively straightforward, so that's the scale mean if we took, got rid of the item, scale variance if that item, and the corrected item total correlation as well. But this is your key one that you'd want to be looking at. Overall, this gives you your overall scale statistics as well. That's the mean scale score, that's the variance, that's the standard deviation, and that's the number of items you analysed. This is a relatively straightforward scale, but not all scales are unidimensional. Some of them have more than one subscale. What we can look at is another scale, and here's just a quick example of it here. The Approach and Avoidance of Alcohol Questionnaire, the AAAQ. So this is a series of questions about alcohol, and it's actually got three subscales to it. It's got inclined indulgence, which are the items in yellow, obsessed compelled, items in blue, and resolved regulated, which are the items in green. What we are interested in this case, rather than just what's the overall reliability, we are interested in the subscales. So are all the items in yellow, do they show acceptable internal reliability? The items in green, do they have internal reliability? And the items in blue, do they have internal reliability? So in this example, we'd have three Cronbach's alphas we'd report. You'd give the alpha for inclined indulgence, for obsessed compels, and for resolved regulated. So the process behind doing this is relatively similar. We go to analyze scale reliability analysis. So we just clear out our previous set. And now we have to produce these items one at a time. So for the inclined ind indulgent scale, we'd want to triple AQ1, 3, 5, nine and 14. So they they all make up the inclined indulgent scale. We click on statistics. Ask for the same items again, click continue, click OK. And again, you can see a similar thing. We've got our Cronbach's alpha statistic here. So we've got Cronbach's alpha 0.873. So it's pretty, again, a good Cronbach's alpha. We've got a mean and standard deviation of each measure. Then we can see the Cronbach's alpha if the item is deleted. And as you can see, actually, if you delete any of these items, the scale gets worse. So then we just need to simply, we'd repeat for the other subscales. So reliability analysis, we need to get rid of those ones, and then we'll do obsessed compelled. So we need to have triple AQ4, 8, 11, and 12. And again, what we can see here, we've got a Cronbach alpha 0.809. Again, delete any of those items, the scale gets worse as well. And then finally, we just repeat the exactly the same process for the final subscale. The resolve regulated, which is 2, 6, 7, 10, and 13. Click OK then. And again, so for this one, you can actually see that the Cronbach's alpha is only just about acceptable. It's only just above the 0.7. So, we know it's in just scraping into it, this one. So if we look at our Cronbach's alpha, which, which ones are problematic? Well, it does seem to be AAAQ6. You'll get a higher one if you remove that item, whereas in all other cases, if you remove any other items, you can see the reliability actually drops below this level. So it drops below the level that would be deemed acceptable. So we've got are three subscales reliability. So we've got inclined indulgence, obsessed compelled, and our resolved regulated. And we could just write this up according.
accordingly, it's a very straightforward write off just saying alpha equals and then the Cronbach's alpha written to two decimal places. I'm going to run through a quick example here. If we just put in, let's put in item 14. So let's just say this made up that subscale there. We put that in now. Now you see, so this is not real data. I've just added up, added in a variable that shouldn't be there. But you can see triple AQ now, 14. It doesn't relate to that subscale at all. You can see our Cronbach's alpha is now 0.49. So we've got really, really quite low. So if we look at this here, what you can see is the Cronbach's alpha, if the item deleted, goes up to 0.719. So it goes basically up to what I've just described there when triple AQ item 14 wasn't included. So, you know, if you were assessing a new scale, validity of a scale, then you may look at this and go, well, clearly this is a problematic item that I have. This item is measuring something fundamentally different to all the other items on the questionnaire. So this would probably be removed from the scale if you're doing a validation. Also, if you're doing this yourself and you're using a scale and you do find this is a problem, then you would be justified in removing that item from scale because it's clearly within your sample measuring something else. So your reliability would be very affected by this. And the blog I referred to actually shows you very clearly statistically the influence of a low Cronbach's alpha on any subsequent statistical analysis that you may do on that scale. And as I say, it's probably worth having a read through that blog if you are interested in looking into this any further.